So you own yourself an FX rifle with a dynamic block. Maybe it's a Pantera, a dynamic itself, or the very beautiful FX King. You bought it with a certain barrel length in a certain caliber, but you're ready for something new and you might want to put on a shorter barrel, a longer barrel, or maybe swap out the caliber altogether. Is that possible? Yes, it is possible and it's not so difficult to do if you follow the correct guidelines. I do strongly recommend if after watching this video you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, we highly recommend having you have it done by a trained technician. So what do you need in order to change the barrel or the caliber on your FX dynamic block? You need one of these barrel kits and a barrel kit contains out of a new barrel with a matching plenum and a matching shroud putting it all nicely together. If you want to change out calibers, you also of course need the matching probe for this. I'll put up a picture in the screen with all the part numbers for the possible barrel kits available for the dynamic range. So as an example, we're going to use the FX King you see right here. It's a 25 caliber 600 millimeter. We're going to convert it to a 25 caliber 500 millimeter. And I'm going to show you also how easy it is to replace that probe or how you can easily replace that probe to maybe a different caliber or to a different style. So let's waste no time and get started. So let's get started and convert this 600 millimeter to a 500 millimeter King. Before we get started, safety first, make sure the rifle is not cocked, there are no pellets in the breech and it has been put on safe. Safe rifle to work on, very important. Now, why did I choose the FX King to do this? It is that is the only dynamic block with a wooden stock, as the, all the other models, they don't have a wooden stock and have free access to all the components. Therefore, I thought it would be interesting for some people on how to remove that GRS stock without damaging it. I also have a separate video specially on this, so you might want to check out that one as well as I go briefly through this one in order to remove it. First thing we remove is the safety by simply undoing the little screw in the middle of the safety. Next, we'll focus our attention to the screws at the bottom. And with those screws loose, we can slide out the action. And the next thing we gotta do is to drain the complete system out of air, as we'll be replacing the plenum and is filled with high pressure air, of course. We got our two gauges to see if that system is empty. And the first thing we'll do on the King is remove that front bottle. Depending on which dynamic rifle you have, you have a bottle at the back, bottle at the front. So simply remove your bottle. And with that bottle removed, you can see that our bottle gauge or our fill pressure reads zero, but our regulator pressure in the plenum still reads about 125 bar. So let's drain that as well. And the best way to do it is by gently cracking that regulator screw. Insert your two and a half millimeter screw or Allen ever so slightly counterclockwise until you hear it starts bleeding and let it bleed out the whole system. Once the system is completely bled out, you can always put your screw, for instance, a quarter of a turn backwards and then afterwards readjust it when we fill it back up with air. This way you not start raising and raising and raising your regulator pressure and you always start back off below it much more gentle on the regulator to bring it back up afterwards. Verify on the gauges that both of them read zero and that we know for sure that our plenum is out of air. First thing we gotta do now is remove that shroud, simply unscrewing it, sliding it off. With the shroud out of the way, we have access to that clamp right here. Now, some of the recent rifles come without screws installed in this. That is no problem. And with those loose, this could be a little bit tight, but you gotta twist off that plenum. If it's too tight to do it by hand, you can always clamp it in a vise on the King. It's very easy with the Picatinny rails on the side, but do make sure you protect it good enough in order to undo it. I will try to do it. <laughs> this one and this one 
is coming loose. Simply unscrew it all the way. Once you unscrew it all the way, bring it past that O-ring. And now you have that spacer at the front that might block you from taking the plenum off. To take them off, you could use some needle nose pliers that you put inside the holes and then twist on it. But for me, in this occasion, it is not necessary and I'll show you in just a second why. So what we're going to do is slide that plenum just a little bit backwards so we have room and access to that barrel. And what we're going to do now is loosen up that uh, probe to take the probe out if you want to change from caliber. The easiest way to take that probe out is to slide it out together with your barrel. The room here is not big enough to take that probe out and it's very much a lot of work in order to take all the internals out and take out the probe from the back. So if you loosen up the probe right here behind that cover, slide it into the barrel and take it out together with the barrel, you have everything done at once. So there are two one and a half millimeter screws, one right here and one back there which we gotta loosen just a little bit, doesn't have to be too much as it's holding down on that cover. The one in the back is actually a two millimeter, like so. And you can push it out from this side through that block, pushing on it. Might not have opened this one far enough, just like so taking it out. Once you open your cocking arm just ever so slightly, you can see there is a small Allen coming, peeking through. You can cock it either all the way if you want, but just make sure your rifle wasn't safe when doing so. Put your Allen key one and a half millimeter into that little screw inside right there. Be careful, some of them are a little bit glued down with Loctite and therefore could be difficult to remove, but if you use a little bit of heat, you should be able to take that screw out. Just for safety reasons and not to damage anything, it is best to take that screw out all the way, just like this. Close that cocking handle again, and now wiggle with your fingers on your pallet probe, pulling it forward, Might be easier while holding the cocking arm. And with that done, you can pu push that probe forward into your barrel, just like so. Now, when we release the barrel, we can take the probe together with that barrel out. To release the barrel, we have two screws, one on this side, one on this side holding down on the barrel. So simply loosen those two. And with that done, now you can wiggle out your barrel, just like this, gently, together with your probe. And now you can change out your probe for another one. So, our barrel kit is out, our probe is out, and it's time to take the other barrel kit and replace everything again. With a 500mm kit all laid out, we can put everything now back together. So you have your barrel, 500mm, 25 in this case. Depending if you change caliber or not, a different probe in order to put it back into your rifle. The correct size plenum that comes with your barrel length and the correct size shroud that also comes with your barrel length. So, first thing we're gonna do is to put the probe into the barrel and then put the barrel into the rifle. As you can see, the probe, it's not like a rectangle square. It has like rounded edges on the top, so it can only fit one way into that carrier. And that is with the opening downwards. So if you take a look at our barrel, we have our dual transfer port right there. So we slide that probe in with the opening downwards. So we know we are already in the right orientation, more or less. Then it's as simple as taking your block. This one still has enough grease on that silver part, but if it's not greased enough, you can always add a little bit more in order not to damage those O-rings when putting 
your barrel back in. The last o-rings are the most tight ones, so do this in a twisty motion, like this. Then we're gonna push our barrel all the way to where it has to be, while finding out where is that correct allocation for our probe. Gently sliding it further and further. You can see our transfer port is showing up, so we have to turn it completely around like this, back forward, like this. Open up the cocking arm to the point, or cock it back again to the point where you can see your probe or the opening. Pull your barrel back and your probe stays behind. Make sure your probe is seated correctly into that carrier. We take the little Allen key with that Allen screw, screw it back into that hole into the side of the carrier. Make it tight, not too tight, so you don't strip out that hex on it. Make sure it doesn't drag on anything, it goes in and out smoothly, and it's in the right orientation, which is very important. At this point, we can always decock the rifle again, like this. Now we still have to manipulate our barrel to the correct seating depth. And on the bottom of our barrel, there is a small indentation mark which orients the correct position downwards right there and you have to make sure it's nice and flush with the face of the bridge at this point you can take the allen keys start tightening up until you feel slight resistance like this then the other side Same here, till you feel slight resistance, wiggle the barrel just a little bit, and I will show you in a second why we're doing this. You can try to wiggle the barrel a little bit, and the reason why we're doing this is because that barrel has like two flat spots onto the side. So when you tighten your two screws in a little bit twisted orientation tight, and you twist the barrel just a little bit, it gets all seated and aligned exactly like the way it should. So with our barrel aligned, the probe inside and the screws done up, just like this, perfect. We can put maybe that cover back, like so nice and flush with the body the front one is a one and a half millimeter and the back one is a two millimeter and with the barrel in we can put our new plenum on and i just put a little bit of grease on the threads to go over that o-ring right there and not to damage it just like this. You can also add a little bit of grease inside the neck right here, as there are also two o-rings that seal onto the barrel, but from factory they are nicely lubricated already. Then it's simple. Take your plenum in the same twisty motion over your barrel, all the way down. Make sure you get past that big o-ring the trues and the threads connect and tighten it down all the way hand tied for me is good enough you can always clamp it back into the vise and do it up firmly but once there is pressure in your plan it won't go anywhere next up let's put this right thing back on it has a front and a back face 
let me show you with a small cutout this side has a small cutout in the face that wraps around the end of your barrel and the other side doesn't have this so this thing goes on this way with the cutout towards the barrel like this take those needle nose pliers like so and with that done quickly lubricate the o-ring on this part so it slides nicely into the shroud take your shroud slide it over make sure the threads start nicely like this and as last we put our bottle back on I always like to cock the rifle to do this so it puts pressure on the valve put your bottle bottle back on and with the bottle on you can see bottle pressure regulator pressure no leaks we can go ahead decock the rifle and we are ready to put that stock back on to put the stock on same reversed procedure make sure everything is nicely and aligned just slide it in hold it down tighten up the screws first the two front ones just touching up the back one and with the back one up you can also do up the front ones make sure you don't don't tighten them too much so you don't damage the wood like this and then we are left with the safety the safety has like little cutouts I don't know if you can see very well running on both sides so it can only sit in one way and now at this position because we were able to decock it you can see it snaps in it's in the fire position take the correct allen key tighten up the screw don't do it too tight as you have to make sure you can still toggle your safety on and off and that is how you convert your dynamic block to a different barrel length or a different caliber just follow the steps in the video and you will be just fine it takes about 10-15 minutes to swap everything around and you have yourself a new barrel length or a new caliber if for some reason after watching this video you still don't feel comfortable doing it yourself please contact a trained technician to have it done for you if there is something in the video that was not 100% clear, you maybe have a question about the installation process or a question about the barrel kits, please put it in the comment section down below and I'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions. I thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you back in the next one.